Just a real quick video on getting started with Alex. Some of you are already uh, started, and that's fantastic. And, um, okay, so get started. Now it talks to you, here's your main menu, right up here. Notifications show up here. Uh, this is just what to do. Um, complete the tools tutorial. Okay. Learn how to enter your answers in. So you do this, and it pops up this, and close that, and um, so I'll say get started. Uh, practice putting in a number, so 14. Now this tells you, um, press clear to clear the answer editor. Undo to cancel your last action, so it walks you through all this. I'm not going to go through all that now, but um, I'm going to skip tutorial. <coughs> skip tutorial okay now here we are the initial knowledge check you want to make sure that you take this uh, this particular uh, test seriously so when you start it uh, put as much effort as you can into uh, getting the problems correct because what you'll find is if you do really poor on this initial knowledge check it may come back and tell you, tell you that you need to learn every topic. And so you may find that your time is, uh, you need to spend in the course has been multiplied by 10 times. So instead of spending maybe a total of 10 hours, uh, maybe you spend 100 hours. On the other hand, if you know the quite a few of the topics and you uh, take the test, you may find that the number of topics you have to do very, each week is very minimal. Okay. And uh, so I click Start Knowledge Check. And um, it says Solve for Z. So you, you go through and you solve this. You don't know. You click I don't know. You click Submit. Let me show you one. It's kind of interesting Start one to start out with. Z is equal to 3 times x minus 8 and we're solving for x so if I um, multiply that through distributive property 3 times x is 3x 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 we'll take the negative 24 over the left side becomes a positive 24 and then divide both sides by 3 And we're going to get x is equal to z plus 24 over 3. I'd say it's interesting to start one to start out with because there's different ways you could write your answer. But if I choose a fraction here, and I say z plus 24 over 3, and um, Okay, so then I have to think how to. Okay, that's a un, that's a clear. That's undo. Okay, so it must be a submit. Okay, and then it goes on to the next one, and so on. And um, I'm going to skip the knowledge check. This is a bad thing for you to do. Uh, you skip it, then it um, will come up here, and you can tell what kind of knowledge you have. Uh, so if I chose, I have a um, little knowledge of college algebra, click continue. Then this will tell me how many, uh, how many topics. See, it says you've mastered 190 of 712 topics in this class. It's like, well, I haven't even done anything. How could I have mastered that many? It, it changes this based upon how many of them you get correct in the knowledge check. So if you um, went through and you aced the knowledge check, you got every one of those problems right, it might come up here and tell you, tell you that you mastered um, uh, 500 of the 712 topics. Okay, so if I, um, I click the continue here, or next, I guess, tells you about it. And um, notice the units. These to correspond to the weeks. Week one, week two, week three, four, five, six. I'll click continue. 
And personal pie, click next, you click next lot, you can click those, get information. Um, you've unlocked your learning path, go to your timeline to see it. And if I click the timeline, the personal timeline, okay, see what you're doing, got it, okay, you're all set. So it comes up here, and um, you'll see what it tells, tells you what's coming up next. Now, as we go on, and you're doing material, like um, if I start my path, brings this up. It should be based upon the current unit, but sometimes it isn't. You see up here it says Algebra and Geometry Review. If I do this drop down, maybe, oh, I'll click Next here. Okay, got it. Now if I do this drop down, you see there's different, um, different items that come up here. So if uh, you have yours jump around, and it tells you after you do this one that you're going to do equations and inequalities, um, only do what we're currently working on. So you may have to change this to a, a different, uh, different item. In theory, the artificial intelligence will, will give you whatever topics you need to successfully finish the material. So sometimes it jumps around a little bit. But students sometimes find that confusing. Uh, so you can control this. Now this drop down here, you can uh, say chapter, whatever chapter you're working on. Uh, you can see these are locked. But um, they might not be locked for other people. It depends upon how you scored an initial knowledge check. So you can come through here and you can pick different ones. Some of these are already locked, though. You can't get to them until you finish other material. Here's addition, subtraction, three fractions involving signs. So this one looks like I could start it. Gives you some kind of explanation. Start. And then, um, you add these two together, or these three together. Or add and subtract, I should say. Okay. Uh -huh. Next. Got it. Okay. Do the drop down here. The you can apply filters. And from the filters here you can uh tell it which which what you want to focus on, goal topics, video, any topic, uh so forth. So you can choose goal topic. Easiest uh, ready to learn. Okay. And um, so you can show all topics. You can reset that. Uh, what else is there to show? Later on, this gets confusing because we can get in chapter three. If you have not finished topics from these previous chapters, it'll bounce around and have you do those. And I've had students tell me that, uh, that it's like when they're trying to do chapter three, it's going and getting, getting these other chapters. Uh, again, it tries to uh, intelligently tell what you need to know uh, to do the current material. For example, this, uh, this topic right here, we're adding fractions. If I have two fifteenths, plus one half minus two thirds. In order to successfully do this, we need to find the least common denominator, the LCM of 15, 2, and 3. And some of you can look at it and see it. But our first step is to do the prime factorization. So in order to find the least common denominator, you have to know how to do the prime factorization. And that's where you do the tree. 15 is 3 times 5. 3 is prime and 5 is prime, so we circle both of them. 2 is prime, so we don't do anything with it. And 3 is prime, so we don't do anything with it. So then our LCD, we are start with the 2. We're looking for the greatest number of 2s on a single line to the right of the equals. And that would be one of them. Now the 3s. We're looking for the greatest number of 3s on a single line to the right of the equals. There's one here, none here, one here, so we'd have one. And for the five, we'd have one five. 
So six times five is 30. Then we're going to rewrite each fraction with that new denominator. And this is the concept of equivalent fractions. So as we're going through and adding and subtracting here, we find that we need to know how to do the LCD. And for the LCD, you need to know how to find the prime factorization. Of course, uh, given with that is you need to know how to identify a prime. Also, to do the adding and subtracting, we need to know how to do equivalent fractions. And even more than that, since we have a mixture of um, positives and negatives, it could be you need to know how to do signs. Now, this is why it'll jump around and do different topics. Now, whether it uh, successfully jumps to the correct topic to, to get you um, the point where you can do this problem, uh, that's, that's questionable. But it, it, the goal of it is that it um, picks the right topics. OK, so this would be 4 over 30, multiply top and bottom by 2. Here you multiply top and bottom by 15. Here you multiply top and bottom by 10. And let me double check myself, 4 over 30, 15 over 30, minus that, okay, so it gives us 19 minus 20 is negative 1 over 30. And uh, let me just double check myself. So I got uh, 4 over 30, oops, 2 over 15, plus 1 divided by 2 minus 2 divided by 3 and then enter and get a decimal and we do math enter enter negative 1 over 30 now the uh, thing about uh, this is let's say, let's say I screwed up but 1 over 30 I leave the negative out and I click check try again I, I don't know recheck it Incorrect. Try read an explanation first and then continue. Okay. And so I um I put five over ten here. Check that. Uh, simplest form. Check that. Recheck. Recheck. Incorrect. Try read an explanation. Now as you get problems correct, then it um it will progress uh, forward but if you get problems wrong then it'll assume that you don't know how to do those those particular topics maybe you don't know how to find the LCM or LCD so it'll back up and maybe have you do do extra problems there so it's, it appears like you've, you've been working and then you you're um, seems like well I got a little bit more material on the other hand if it if you're making good progress and you may find that it um, very quickly goes through it so it's a little strange getting used to. Okay, now if I do this drop down here, this is where you find a textbook right here. Um, you can go to your grade book. Um, now the grades will be transferred over over to Blackboard, so um, this won't mean a whole lot to you. But you can see what you get on the current uh, current material and so forth. Uh, you can choose assignments, worksheets, so. Um, on these, if you have problems working it, you can um, message your instructors. You send me an email and say, hey, um, question, oops. please explain why uh, the LCD um, is important or, or whatever you're asking. And you just click send, and then I'll get the I'll get the message. That's about all I really had to show you on Alex to get you started. 